In this video, we're going to be looking at the impacts and risks of digital technology on society. In your exam, all your questions are going to be based around a scenario or a particular area. So it's good to understand everything that we've talked about in the preceding videos in the context of a scenario. In the exam, you need to be able to consider how technology impacts on different groups of people and different levels of society. If we take a school as a context, then we can consider technology impact from the point of view of the students, the teachers, the parents, the school governors, and perhaps the wider community too. So really anybody that has an interest in that business or that scenario would be appropriate. There are literally thousands of scenarios that we could consider, but in this video, we're just going to focus on one particular example, and then you can use that as a framework for other scenarios too. So let's consider the rise of online banking and the effect that it's had on high street and high street banking. As more and more people become familiar with banking online and it becomes a greater expectation in our society, there's less need for high street banks because people can do all their transactions and banking needs online. This is a concern because it's resulting in a decline in the high street and some people still rely on those services. In April 2017, this scenario came into the news as a future Labour government claimed that it would bring in laws preventing banks closing high street branches. The Labour Party said that it was part of the party's plan to rejuvenate the high street and to protect local communities. The Consumers Association reports that 1,046 local branches closed in the UK between December 2015 and January 2017. The Conservatives claimed Labour's plans would see corporation tax at 28% and lead to £500 billion of extra debt. Labour said it would replace government's access to banking protocol with legislation to prevent closures. The Labour Party said that the big four banks made more than £11 billion in profit from their high street banks in 2015 and can afford to provide this vital customer service instead of prioritising cost-saving measures that damage communities and small businesses. Labour pointed to research that suggested lending to small businesses dropped by 63% in areas with recent branch closures, and the loss of the local branch significantly diminishes the ability of deprived communities and households to access even basic financial services. At the time, the Shadow Chancellor John MacDonald said the high street bank closures have become an epidemic in the last few years, blighting our high street centres, hurting particularly elderly and more vulnerable customers and local small businesses, whilst making healthy profits for themselves. It's time our banks recognised that they are a utility providing an essential public service. So there was clearly a difference in political opinion in the UK in terms of high street banking and whether it's actually a business or a utility service. So let's break this scenario down and think about the four different groups of people in society that the situation would impact on. We've got the customers of the bank, we've got the staff working at the bank, we've got the bank's directors and shareholders and we've got the local community. So from a typical customer's perspective, we might argue that there's no need to travel to the bank, which is an advantage. People can access the bank 24-7 on a range of devices, including their desktop PCs and mobile devices. They can make instant decisions on loans because a lot of processes can be automated. But there's less of a personal service and a lot of people value that. And obviously, it's also potentially open to hacking. For bank staff, they may lose their jobs because of closure of branches. It might create new jobs, though but there might be new working practices to adopt, or maybe there's a different skill set that required the original workers to retrain. For the bank shareholders, there are less overheads because there are probably less staff to pay. 
there's no utility bills and rent for commercial premises. They can also get advantages by targeting marketing directly to the customers. They're no longer reliant on them coming into the branch, but they also have to take responsibility now for people's data protection. For the local community, the other local shops may suffer a loss in revenue because there are less people around the area of the town centre where the bank is located. Small businesses rely on a local service for simple things like paying in cheques, and often the elderly and vulnerable customers in particular value the local personal service. Now what we've gone through is not intended to be completely exhaustive, but it gives you a flavour of some of the key points that you might make when you're tackling questions based on this area in the exams. One thing to note is you cannot revise every scenario and you'd be ill-advised just to revise the situation of online banking. But you should use the framework in order to answer very similar questions. So what you need to do is remember some key groups of people that could be impacted. With most scenarios, you've probably got customers, you've got staff, you've got the company directors and shareholders, and you've got the local community. Now that won't necessarily apply to all the scenarios, but with a little bit of adaptation, it does cover a vast range of possibilities. You've also then got some key impacts. You've potentially got increased profits. You've got increased production and productivity. You've got loss of jobs, less overheads, less personal service, and 24 seven access, just to name a few. Again, these won't necessarily apply to all the scenarios that you're trying to tackle, so be aware. One final idea to have in your head, which can help you add extra depth and detail to some answers, would be to make sure you consider the impact of the scenario on society at a local, national and international level. But once more, this might not be totally appropriate to every scenario you are presented with. In all situations, you need to make sure that your answer definitely answers the question you're being asked and you don't just use it as an opportunity to say everything that you understand about the topic. But these are just a few of the basic things that you should have in your mind when you're answering these types of questions in the exam. So one final note before we leave this topic. Throughout we've been talking about the ethical, legal, environmental and where appropriate privacy impacts of digital technology. But as we've kept saying, exam questions will be based on a scenario. And in the specification, it states that exam questions will be taken from the following areas. So scenarios and questions will be based around cybersecurity, wireless networking, cloud storage, hacking, wearable technologies, computer-based implants, and autonomous vehicles. Now don't panic. It says in the clarification documents that you'll be expected to understand and explain the general principles behind these issues rather than have detailed knowledge on specific issues. But it does help to be able to see the sort of scenarios and topics you're going to get to understand how to apply your understanding of ethical, legal, environmental and privacy impacts.